All right, kids, America loves crime. Showing crime is how Fox News and CNN pay their bills. Ignoring crime may be the reason why a former president may be a future president. And crime is why the suburbs has invested in ring doorbells. Not to prevent it from happening, but to watch it happen. We love crime so much that an entire genre was created to give us what we want. True crime. A YouGov survey found that nearly half of Americans say they enjoy true crime content and a third consume it at least once a week. That includes a quarter who say they consume it multiple times per week. Only 30% say they never consume true crime content. The survey finds 52% of Americans say they consume true crime content through TV shows, which ranks first, followed by films, books, online videos, podcasts, and online articles and forums. I probably don't need to tell you that women are into true crime more than men. Crime is clearly a source of entertainment, bringing comfort and care to millions. But somehow, some way, America tells me that one form of entertainment, in particular, creates crime. Pop, pop me a seal, bitch, I'm getting loose. She made a deal, swerve off in the coop. Smoking that kill, she can't run away. He busting out guards, rolling a booth. That was actually, I'll let his dad explain. I got a son. He, he, he raps. His, his rap name is Tut Tarantino. If you ever listen to some of his raps, I'm like, oh my God, where does this come from, son? You grew up in a gated community your whole life. You know how rappers snitch on themselves, right? Well, I want the parents to expose their kids. More of this, please. But I want to hear what these rappers' real names are. I bet it'll sound like that sketch from Key and Peele where football players are introducing themselves for the East-West College Bowl. Tavarius Nith King, Merrimack College. Todd Royal, Smoochie Wallace. University of Miami. Anyways, that was Hall of Famer, former Dallas Cowboys wide receiver, Michael Urban, father of Elijah Urban, AKA Tut Tarantino. The playmaker said something similar to this four years ago on the Dan Patrick show. So Tut has been at this for a while now. Well, recently I made a video where I asked, is rap music the cause of violence in black communities? With a challenge being, show me on these charts where hip hop's impact on murder rates and rates of violent crime in the US is located. The comment section couldn't, and not only asked its own questions, then answered them, but I was told that rap music specifically glorifies, promotes, and romanticizes crime. So today we're gonna to talk about crime because too many people are making concessions in order to make claims about rap music when American history shows us that we have always glorified, promoted, and romanticized crime and criminals, at least some, to the point that they became celebrities. And we're gonna start with murderers. If someone had told me that I was gonna give up sex for the rest of my life when I first met Lyle, I would have died laughing. I would have never in a million years pictured that that would be a facet of my life where I'd say, oh, well, don't care if I ever do that again. Um, but it happened so slowly through being friends and, and then being, you know, alone, not having a boyfriend or anything and being close to Lyle and then growing to love him. That was Anna Erickson, Finnish pop star and model who was married to Lyle Hernandez. Lyle and his brother Eric were convicted for killing their parents in Beverly Hills. They said they murdered their folks due to fear. They accused their father of abusing them and their mother of enabling this behavior and being complicit with it. Others say this criminal act was because of money. Lyle and Eric went on spending sprees after shooting their parents to death. Here they are at a Knicks game. Either way, they were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The first trial was televised, yet led to a hung jury. While in jail, waiting for the second trial, the Menendez brothers received hundreds of letters from women in an LA County jail. You may be noticing that I'm not going into details about the Menendez brothers. That's because... I don't have to. There are so many books, TV shows, documentaries, pop culture references, and movies about them. I don't have to say much. You already know. This may be the case for every example I provide here on out. And before I continue, did Court TV promote the Menendez brothers intentionally or not? Furthermore, do movies glorify violence and crime and romanticize criminals too? Or is that just rap? Because that's what the casting director and film director were doing when Zac Efron was chosen to play Ted Bundy in the movie Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile, right? Sexiness. And that's just one movie about Ted Bundy alone. There's enough for Screen Rant to make a movie ranking, worst to best, top 10 list about him. This doesn't mean that Hollywood has influenced the serial killers that have come along since then. Would they be due in part to the narrative across many mediums that Bundy is so smart, cunning, 
leading women to feel scared yet safe around him. Every time he turns around, I kind of get that feeling, no, oh, no, you know, he's going to get me next. You know? But yet you're, you're fascinated by him. Very, very. Every night when I go to bed, I just, you know, I get very scared. I shut my door and lock him. You know? I'm not afraid of him. He just doesn't look like the type to kill somebody. None of this takes away from the fact that millions cheered when Bundy was convicted for his crimes and executed for them, which is another symptom of the problem I'm describing, by the way. People watching the electric chair and lethal injections People celebrated when Jeffrey Dahmer was murdered in jail, but uh, any cannibal that came after Dahmer, is it because of him and how he and his murders were covered? There's five films about him. There were more celebrity criminals before then whose fame grew after their time. Let's take things back to the 1967 film Bonnie and Clyde, directed by Arthur Penn and starring Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway in the title roles, which revived interest in Bonnie and Clyde from the Great Depression and glamorized them with a romantic aura. In his book, Go Down Together, The True Untold Story of Bonnie and Clyde, Jeff Gwynn said, John Dillinger had matinee idol good looks and Pretty Boy Floyd had the best possible nickname. But the Joplin photos introduced new criminal superstars with the most titillating trademark of all, illicit sex. Clyde Barrow and Bonnie Parker were wild and young and undoubtedly slept together. Bonnie and Clyde were so famous, not just infamous, that when they were killed by the posse near Gibsland, Louisiana, locals wanted to collect hair and clothes samples from them to be sold as souvenirs. Some dude tried to cut Clyde's trigger finger off. Here it is as depicted in the 2019 movie, The Highwaymen. And this is an excerpt from The Lives and Times of Bonnie and Clyde by E.R. Milner. Arriving at the scene, the coroner reported, quote, nearly everyone had begun collecting souvenirs such as shell casings, slivers of glass from the shattered car windows, and bloody pieces of clothing from the garments of Bonnie and Clyde. One eager man had opened his pocket knife and was reaching into the car to cut off Clyde's left ear. The gun-riddled car, with 112 holes, was towed to the furniture store slash funeral parlor. Likewise, Ma Barker from the Prohibition era, when authorities surrounded and raided a home that they thought was headquartered for a gang where it was believed that she was a criminal mastermind, it's rumored that neighbors came outside to watch and to listen, to make a picnic out of it. I can go on and on about our love affair with crime during the Great Depression and Prohibition. However, we clearly had a thing for criminals even before the 20th century. Ron Hansen, author of The Assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford, said, quote, he's the Elvis Presley of the 19th century, referring to the legendary outlaw. He became famous before his death because of the novels that were being written about him. Jesse James was so famous for robbing banks and trains that when a nobody named Robert Ford, who was also a fanboy of his, shot an unarmed Jesse James, 34 years old at the time, from behind on April 3rd, 1882, he became famous himself. He went around flashing his reward money and everything. Then, in early June of that year, a man by the name of Ed O'Kelly shot and killed Ford with a shotgun. In prison, O'Kelly, the man who took the last breath from James's killer, received fan mail. It came from around the country and across oceans. The warden and other inmates were astonished at his celebrity. There's museums and historic sites dedicated to Jesse James's life, festivals and reenactments in his honor. Meanwhile, Billy the Kid, real name Henry McCarty, allegedly shot and killed anywhere from seven to 24 men, depending on the source, before he was gunned down at the age of 21. Well, the progenal phototype picture of him, which is two by three inches, was bought at an auction for $2.3 million by conservative businessman William Koch. And this has nothing to do with nothing. But after Butch Cassidy was gunned down, there was rumors that he survived false sightings and people even claimed to be him, just like black people did and still do with Tupac. By the way, the murdering, gunfighting, gangbanging, bank and stagecoach robbing fugitive criminals. What music were they listening to in order to make them commit these crimes? I still don't know how this works. But I know that Birth of a Nation, a movie, brought back the Klan in the early 1900s, along with KKK-style lynching and terrorizing. That isn't to undermine the effect that music has on our hearts, souls, minds, thoughts, our feelings, and experiences. I've been in clubs when a Lord John song came on. I know what time it is. And we can have a discussion about why it seems like rappers need to be a certain way in order to sell records, and the ways in which executives and promoters and radio stations play in allowing for death and destruction to go over the airwaves in this one genre of music more than others. However, 
And I can't stress this enough. Serial killers didn't become celebrities due to hip hop and rappers don't become serial killers. Drop a beat under these true crime TV shows, movies, documentaries, and podcasts and see if they suddenly promote, glorify, and glamorize crime. We love this stuff. Don't know why some of y'all don't love Tupac. I mean, he's got a mugshot and it's been almost 30 years since he died. His legend should grow in middle America. I wonder why it hasn't. But this is the population of people who Tut Tarantino is trying to sell records to. As far as I'm concerned, he's playing a role, a character, like actors in movies and TV shows. But as you've seen today, live by the gun, die by the gun. Instead of blaming rap music for the untimely loss of life from the likes of King Von and Young Dolph, could we at least examine the real lives they were leading? What's the point of having a problem with rappers gun-toting in pictures and in music videos, but not when Congress does it? What's the difference? Representative Byron Donalds can't write rhymes, so he gets a pass? Whack. I mean, at least Bonnie wrote poems. The representative doesn't talk about shooting people? Yes, he does. I'd do anything to protect my family? And he's from a stand-your-ground state, unless he is faking it like some rappers do. Oh, oh. And I'm not going to necessarily say that rappers are inspired by outlaws and gangsters, but they also want the money and the guns and the hoes and the drugs that they had. Jay-Z's whole thing used to be my boss. He's got a song called O3 Bonnie and Clyde. His music features references to Dutch Schultz and Butch Cassidy. Beanie Siegel's rap name may emulate Bugsy Siegel. Fabulous called himself William H. Bonnie. That's Billy the Kid. I made a TikTok video about the band, Dylon, Dylon. Dylon, Dylon, Dylon is short for Dylon Dillinger. I did an episode here a few weeks ago about the Forbes 30 for 30 summit where Machine Gun Kelly was a panelist and performer. Where do you think he got his name from? Where do you think crime comes from? Did you notice the theme of the criminals I presented in this video? White? Yes, but they were mostly young. Victims of abuse or a lack of mental health resources. They lived in financial upheaval and depressions and recessions. They were fatherless and had access to weapons. Violent crime in America is a socioeconomic phenomenon. Those living at or below the federal poverty line are most likely to commit crime. Additionally, when you control for poverty in segregated neighborhoods, which is concentrated poverty, the disparity of violent crime between white and black communities almost disappears. Now, if Tupac can stop faking being dead so he can say what I just said in a ring doorbell so a true crime podcast can pick it up, then maybe white middle America can understand. Until then, we're going to be all right. I feel like I should explain why America likes true crime so much, but I want to hear from you. What does that genre do for you personally? I know you like it. I already covered the polls and surveys earlier.